So in my last UI UX design video, I realized that I talked a lot about my day and my life, but I did not really show much of my work. So in this video, I'm going to be talking a lot about my design process, the resources that I use and the work itself. And I hope this sheds some light on the things I do as a UI UX design intern, as well as a freelance UI UX designer. My teammates. <laughs> right and there's another part of my life that I think would be good to share in this video as well so I am a UI UX designer intern but I'm also a student at NUS and specifically I'm staying in a residential college the College of Alice and Peter Tan and as you just saw it's like election period right now for the student committee and <laughs> I can't believe they made a shirt from Uniqlo. So yeah, student life is really very fun and thankfully it's not a very tough semester. Um, it's really quite manageable. I think also due to the fact that it was a much tougher semester the previous time and in my first year, I think I'm more or less adjusted and comfortable with my workload in school, which is why I took on a part-time internship. I made some coffee. Anyway, a little update. I did research for OpenSea, Rarible Foundation, Super Rare, Maker's Place, Async Art, and Mintable. I'm gonna continue on with a few more sites. There's Known Origin, Nifty Gateway. So I'm just gonna look at those two sites and then I will start coming up with a wireframe or a kind of user flow. I learned a lot of things from these websites that I didn't originally know or think too much about. Yeah, and I realized that it's really quite challenging to get started in the NFT space if you're a complete beginner like I was. Even now, some things are still a bit confusing to me, so I can't imagine what it's like to get into it now. And there's even more information out there to digest. Okay, so now I'll finally be showing how I kind of do my wireframing and design process. Just a brief overview or look into it because I think I can go on and on. Essentially for wireframing, if I don't feel like using my iPad, I'll just do it really rough. Oh no, wrong page. <laughs> I'll just do it really roughly on paper. Like this was just a really rough and messy sprawl of information for another UI UX project that I was doing for freelance. So yeah, simple things like drawing something like this. The main plus point or the main reason for doing wireframing on paper or something really, really fast is because of the speed or the efficiency. So I think my day is normally full of just questioning myself and the process that I want to take to accomplish the different tasks that I've been given. But okay, I think in this case, I'm not going to do the wireframing. I'll probably do the user flow first and then figure out the interfaces to accomplish the tasks in each part of the user flow, if that makes sense. Okay, I don't really know if that made sense, but I thought this would be a good time to talk about my UI UX design process, especially for my freelance gigs that I occasionally do get with very, very kind clients. So this was one that I worked on really recently. I basically had to design a new interface for their app that was kind of a shopping social media app for pet owners to buy and sell all things related to pets. So as you see in the video, this is actually a screen recording that I took when I was having a a consultation with the client and then I go on to do market research and this involves me reading different articles as well just to understand a bit more about how I may want to do certain things that may be new to me and then I go on to wireframing so I don't spend too much time here especially if I'm on a tight deadline I think what's most helpful for me is the navigation diagram just to imagine what page leads to what page and once I have a rough idea of that I'll get started with the prototyping and design in a software I've been using Adobe XD for the longest time just because I subscribe to it and it's really expensive each month so I'm making use of that but I am trying to get used to Figma I'm taking an interaction design module in school now so it's been very very helpful in motivating me to learn Figma and I might talk a bit more about that in the future but anyway Another thing when it comes to prototyping is definitely the design elements. So things like branding, 
colors, typography, and I usually get a good idea of what colors and fonts to use from the market research earlier on in the design process. But if the company already has their own branding that they want to adhere to, then I'll just follow that. I also wanted to talk about this new Notion page that I put together on UI UX Design. So welcome to my UI UX Design Notion page. And I'm thinking of selling this on some platform online. I don't know which platform is good for selling Notion templates, but I'll probably put that somewhere. So basically all the resources in this page used to sit lying in limbo in my notion and i finally decided to put it all together in this one page and i'll be updating it constantly since ui ux design is something that i definitely want to explore as a career so let me do a quick run through of each section so this first section is on some of my key pages things like design ideas so i'm someone that loves thinking and i love seeing how things can be improved so this design ideas page is for that and i do work on some of the ideas in there when i do have time unfortunately not too much time right now but it's okay summer's coming soon <laughs> And this next page is on product design exercises. So I subscribe to a newsletter that sends weekly design exercises that is really helpful and useful if you are trying to beef up your portfolio. These are some really good exercises to start with. And this UI UX design tools is just a page for me to compile some different tools that are really up and coming and things that I do want to check out when it comes to UI UX design. And this foundations of user experience design page is actually notes from the Google course. So all the notes are just in there for easy reference. And this CS3240 interaction design is the module that I mentioned just now. And these resources were actually from my friend. And I've also made some changes as well from what I've personally learned from the course thus far. And this toggle is for books. I'm sure everyone knows this book. It's a really popular one and it's on my to read list. Unfortunately, I haven't gotten to it yet. I do want to buy the book from Kino Kunia, so I'm going to do that soon. And this toggle is just for notes on specific topics like this one for designing offline, so pretty cool. And this section is for UI UX websites and blogs. So there are some really popular ones here like UX Collective, and I think it's really important and useful to keep up with UI UX design principles, rules, tools, and news. So all these websites and web bookmarks are for that. And this next section is on UI UX fundamentals, which I think is really helpful to refer to. and. I just put it all here and it's definitely a growing list because there's always so much to learn. And this next section is just for resources that I like. Like this one on design principles for localizing in China I thought was really really interesting and it's so interesting to me how different countries have different interfaces that they're used to and it's, it's pretty cool. So that's all for my UI UX design notion page. If you're interested, I'll put the link in the bio and thank you so much for growing with me and learning UI UX design with me. And and I guess that's all for this video as well. I pray that you stay safe, happy, and healthy wherever you are. Bye!